All right, Java students, it's time for us to begin our first project. And, oh, this is still going on. So in this project, you're going to be solving a bunch of different problems, each one relating to a specific topic that you've been reviewing in this section. However, I want you to create a single program that showcases all of your different solutions. I don't want you to package up each solution in a different file. For example, you could consider making a bunch of different classes, one for each of your solutions. That's overkill. We can do better than that. So what I've done here is I've just set up a basic kind of framework for the project. You're more than welcome to copy this down for yourself to get started. I want to show you just another strategy I'm using here to condense things even more. I've just created a single class called Runner. And in this class, I have the class definition up here. It just has my public static void main in it, as well as an instantiation of a different class that I've made, where I'm just going to run all my content so I can get rid of the static like we talked about previously. Notice, I can create another class inside of the same class file, just by making it not public. And this means it's a local class, so only this particular file can access it, but that's all I need for this. So I kind of have two classes running here. One is just my runner, and the other one is the actual content that when I instantiate it, starts my program. So everything's set up to run here. And you'll see that if I press run, my start program runs and prints out, oh, there we go, program started down here in my constructor. So what you might be tempted to do in your project is something like this, where, okay, you set things up like Mr. Rowell, and what you say is problem one, and then you solve problem one. Maybe problem one something simple like accept a user input and then uh, add it to a string that you already have. So maybe you have a string uh, saved state or saved message and it equals this message is mine, yours is dot dot dot. Okay, so I have the save message and then I want to actually gather some user input and concatenate it together. So maybe I'm just going to write some pseudocode here. I gather user input and then I concatenate, meaning add, add the string to my string and print it out. And then I succeed in doing that. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. Problem one is solved. And so I go, okay, now time for problem two. And then I just add problem two next and I, I start solving it. Maybe it's to create a, a small piece of conditional logic functionality. And then I can complete that. And I make problem three and I, I can't type. Okay. Problem three, and then I do all those down to the final problem. Would this program function? It would, because the program would start, and then first it would do problem one, and then once that was done, right away it'd go into problem two, then three. This is called procedural code, where it follows a procedure in order all the way to the end, which is functionally correct, but strategically or design focused. Well, it's, it's incorrect, because what I want you to do is provide me the option of picking and choosing which problem I want to view the solution to as many times as I want. And so to do that, we actually want to set up a bit of a menu that works alongside methods. I'm not going to fully solve this problem because it's actually one of your challenges in the assignment, but I wanted to set up at least the basics of it so that you weren't feeling totally lost, just in case. So what I can do, actually, let me undo this here. One thing that I can do that would be a lot better is to take this idea of a problem one where all the content of the solution is here and make this more modular, meaning I create a specialized tool in my code that's just for this problem. I'm going to call it problem one. And now I need to make the method to host this private void problem one. Oops, problem one. And then I can paste the content of this problem in here. So now what I've done is added a link. My program starts and problem one method is referenced and accessed and so I, it's procedurally the same as it was before, except that it's at least a little bit more modular. So I'm going to copy this and make another method, private void problem two. Inside of the content, I need to copy and paste that I guess, down here and then I make another one, problem three. Maybe I even want to name these things differently, like string problem or variable problem or whatever the name might be. But now I'm creating modular links, which is going to make the main flow of my program a bit easier to follow and maybe even make these comments a little bit redundant because it kind of self-describes the order of things. However, it's not just about being procedural. That's still a problem. We've made it more modular, but the proceduralness needs to change. 
What I really need is a looping menu that processes user input. And what I mean by that is maybe I get some user input. Let's just say I have a user input int. For now, I'm just going to assign a value to it, but you might want to actually ask the user to choose. And what I can do is I can process the logic like user input. If it equals one, then I run problem one. And if my user input is two, then I run problem two and so on and so forth, meaning that I now am able to select the problem that I view. Maybe I even want to give a bit of information. Uh, actually, above, I want to provide a, head, a bit of a menu header that says, like, problem one is this problem, problem two is that one. So I actually give a, a little bit of a, a description. Problem one uh, solves variable challenge. Problem two, blah, 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 however you want to describe it. And then provide a while loop while whatever condition you have, I'll let you set this up yourself, but the idea is to put all this content inside of the while loop. Maybe we should say something like while uh, program running. I'll let you set this up yourself though. You allow the user to choose over and over and over again so that me, as I'm reviewing your code, has a much nicer interface to interact with your program. And you also communicate your understanding of the conditional logic as well as the loop structure user input, outputting information. There's a lot of understanding that you communicate by setting up your project like this. So it's more easy for you to follow, more easy for me to follow, and better at showcasing your understanding. None of this procedural code that just solves things one at a time. I want you to package it up into modules and stick it in a menu so it's a lot better of a program for me to interact with. Please design your program with this in mind, and I'm going to let you figure out all the rest of it so that you can show me your understanding rather than just following along my tutorials for the next part. Good luck on your projects.